What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another awesome episode. Today's guests are known for doing esports and also running an esports organization. Um, I'm guessing they're really competitive. I don't know a whole lot about esports, but our guests go by the name of Narcolepsy and Lion. So let's skip this, let's get to it. Boom. <laughs> Listening to the Gas Gauge Podcast. All right, three, two, one. Welcome, guys. Thank you for joining me on the Gas Gauge Podcast. We got narcolepsy, and we got Lion. How's it going, guys? <laughs> good, good. How you doing today? Doing good, dude. I appreciate you guys joining me, uh, and you're gonna teach us about the the esports um, organizations and whatnot. Uh, but if you want, to go ahead and tell about yourselves, what you do. Headline. Oh, you're gonna make me go first. <laughs> I mean, uh, I've been in esports for yeah, I would say at least 15 years now. I used to play like Call of Duty a lot, and then uh, basically my little brother got into gaming and PC gaming. And when he first started getting going with it, you know, he uh, joined a esports org called Wired Esports. Learned a good amount from there. You know, basically that org kind of fell apart. You know, poor management. Guy basically was a scammer and took money from you know people and just dipped one day i was out fishing and got a message and said the guy goes uh you know we're shutting down wire esports the next thing i knew the whole discord was wiped basically my little brother ended up you know signing with a different org he went to uh, merkin clan followed him there as a team manager and uh he ended up getting signed with tsm wow. and uh once he got signed with tsm basically i ended up uh working with a bunch of another like another couple of orgs um i worked with one called love gaming you know and basically was a team manager there Got handed a sheet of 50 players and said, pick your team. <laughs> That's cool. And uh, yeah, it was actually pretty fun. Kind of like open door kind of thing, like where you can have as many teams as you wanted. So like, I never wanted to like, just go down to like one team, but we had uh, like our pro roster, which was uh, Fury, I think his name was Bali. And there was one other guy, um, some German dude, and I can't remember his name for the life of me. You know, they ended up uh, going to the first Apex International land. Oh, wow. Um, and I got to go with them and inter- and represent Love Gaming there. Um, That's cool, dude. That's really cool. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. So and then, uh, uh, so esports yeah, is that, basically uh, tournament style coaching. To a sense, uh, there's more to it. There's, I mean, there's uh, you know, like content creators, you know, esports side of it, you know, and then and this on side top of, of that for us, there's managing, and then this side of it where you know, you talk about the org and you know, try to just make connections. Cool. So, so do you got like team A, team B? So like, like you got some people over on Call of Duty saying, "Man, we'll smack any crew out there," and you're like, "Dude, I got five people that'll show you otherwise." Kind of yeah, stuff. Is it like that, or? Uh, I mean, they do their fair share of talking on their own. We don't really have to talk for them. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Oh, so they're repping. That's that's even better. Yeah, Call of Call of Duty, Call of Duty players, Apex players. I mean, anybody, anybody kind of in the competitive scene kind of talks to talk. You know, everybody likes to talk a little smack here and there. And uh, what esports comes down to is people will talk to talk. What esports comes down to if you're walking the walk and you show it in your gameplay. But that's, yeah. I mean, that's not our side of things. Right. No, I, I respect it. Um. So would that fall under like Smite too? Like when you're watching the Smite finals, is that that's considered esports as well? Yeah. So okay, anything, cool. anything, any video game that's paid competitive, competitively for money is considered esports. Even this, even games you've never heard of have esports. You know, people have like uh, a good example is PUBG Mobile is a lot bigger than regular PUBG. Really? And they have huge tournaments for PUBG Mobile over over in Asia. Okay. Huge tournaments. That game's actually popping off lately too, man. Yeah, they just did their big old update that everybody's been waiting for. I don't know if you know K Switch. He's he's been like he's been like, dude, you gotta do an update. You gotta do the update. It's like, man, I barely play video games anymore, bro. I know. I gotta get to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know K Switch. Yeah, he's pretty. He's a cool cat, man. So, so let's hear about you, uh, Narcolepsy. What, what's your story, man? I've been in esports probably since I don't I don't know how many years, but since I was in high school, I've always loved being competitive in video games, no matter what it was. I never played it pr- played the professional level, but I did play FIFA pretty competitively and for money and in tournaments when I was younger, like high, high school and just out of high school and stuff like that. Um, cool. I was part of probably like one or two orgs in high school and just out of high school and kind of always just loved watching and you know the atmosphere because I'm, I'm a, I was a soccer player growing up so I love the competitive atmosphere and you know esports is kind of a mix of 
you know, what I love doing when it came to soccer and then when I, I love playing video games. So the kind of the competitive scene of that kind of just kept me going because I love watching sports and any sports. So um, kind of grew up, grew up playing FIFA was my kind of my thing. Sure. Uh, I played Call, I played Call of Duty all the time. We, I mean, I had, you know, the, the Xbox 360 clans, you know, that you went in and <laughs> up stopped the lobby. We, we never, <laughs> we never, we never went. I mean, I. I've done tournaments like locals and tournaments and stuff like that and open signups and stuff like that growing up, but I've never had like a like a Call of Duty team and stuff like that until probably my experience before what led to starting Spectre. But yeah, I've always just kind of been around playing competitively when I could and kind of managing and running things, but I've always kind of been more of a, a viewer and a like a manager more than I have a player. No, dude, I respect that a lot, actually. I love viewing, too. And that's that's what takes up a lot of my time. Like, I got homies that are like, hey, let's game. I was like, I'm kind of watching Homeboy right now, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's kind of out of something, dude. Well, that's awesome, man. Yeah. I, I, love, I love that not only are you guys, like, uh, very knowledgeable, but you can you can back it up, too, you know, with your own experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's uh what's what's been your guys like? Do you guys face other orcs? Do you guys have like a beef out there with anyone? Or I mean, um, you, don't, you don't have to say it on here, but like you got do you got rivals? I, I should say. All I will say is that several orcs have come to come to clashes with us because some sort of beef or whatever they have, and I won't name names, but I will say four, three out of the four orcs don't exist anymore. Oh dang, you shut them down, huh? Well, I mean, not we didn't shut them down, but it's just, it's you know they just fell out. Huh? Not much you can do against running up against a steel wall with a you know inflatable hammer. <laughs> right. <laughs> so so who so who met who, who met who? Was it like so, was it like lion was lion was like hey I got this idea or was it or was it? Uh, so I I get to take credit for being the brainchild of this. Okay. <laughs> even though he doesn't <laughs> even though he doesn't like it, I get to I get to take credit for being the brainchild because um I mean I don't I don't think we get in too much trouble, but we were both part of a, an org called Premier that was pretty big on Mixer back in the day. Oh man, that's old school. Um <laughs> the Mixer days. Uh, yeah, there was they were they were probably one of the the bigger orgs on Mixer. Um, I came in as a content creator uh, by recommendation of a lot of people who were in there. You know, they were they were speaking up for me and telling me you should pick up this guy and stuff like that. And I don't know if I, I believe Lion was already part of it when I had gotten there, but he wasn't in the position he was when he left. Um, but I came in as a content creator and then a lot of people liked my energy and what, you know, how I conducted myself. And I ended up getting made a community manager. So I started I started doing that and planning community events and unfortunately I got different messages from the different owners and leaders and stuff so I wasn't able to get anything solid and everything because I would go to one leader and tell them what I had planned and they would say oh well that's not what we're trying to do and so I would change it up and you know I would ha end up talking to another leader and they would say oh well we're not that's what we're not trying to do I don't know who told you that and it's like well this guy told me that and it just yeah. got it just kept spiraling until eventually I was the position got taken from me without even me getting notified or anything. That's booty. Um, even though I had already planned an event and put it out there, um, and they put someone else in my place, so, and so karma kind of came back. around. Yeah, you bounced yeah, back. Yeah, <laughs> karma kind of karma kind of came around because that guy tried to plan something, and everybody in the org ended up showing up to my event instead of his event, oh. <laughs> and. That was the, I guess I was like, I, cause I don't know what I did to be honest. Like you, yeah, I mean, you can ask Lion. I did nothing but write by them. I guess that was his last straw with me because he started treating me a lot different. He started being a lot ruder, keeping me out of things and all this. So I decided to um, part ways uh, with the org. No, you know, no ill will. You know, I didn't even have resentment towards the, towards the owner who did me wrong or anything like that. So I kind of left and then stuff went down with Lion and he ended up leaving. And so I approached Lion probably a couple weeks later because I had been cooking something up because the, the owner unfortunately stole a bunch of my ideas as well and put them into play. So I, I just kind of had it. And I, so I, after I left, you know, I think it was like two, three weeks later, Lion ended up leaving and I ended up hitting him up. And I was like, dude, let's just, you know, let's just fucking do this on our own. Like, we know what we know what to do. We know what we want. And that was the beginning that, and that we had that talk in September of 2020. By October 9th of 2020, we were officially LLC and ready to go. That's beautiful, man. You guys just you just came. That's awesome. That's that, there's nothing better than like somebody telling you you can't do something, and you're like, oh, dude, watch this. You know what I mean? And then you guys are just and then, like I've Absolutely. I've been in your Discord. It's huge. 
Yeah. Discord is huge, dude. And I, I know a couple other people, like Static Suppressor. I've seen some some messages from him. I actually love watching that dude play. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then I know Drifter. I, I think I met you through Drifter. Um, and then, yeah, because uh, we played Smite. Yep. Dude, what do you think about that? You guys gonna be you guys gonna get a team going for Smite too? Dude, I would love to, but unfortunately, there is no outside esports for Smite because uh, what Smite franchises all their teams. All those all those teams you see play professionally are owned by High Res. Mm. So we can't. We have no way to get in. Oh yeah. Unless, they, unless they change. Unless they change their formatting. Because no, there's man. no org. There's no org out there that owns a team in uh, in Smite. They may. They may be content creators for orgs, but all those teams are owned 100 percent by Smite okay. and built by Smite. Yeah, that's that's unfortunate, man. They should they should yeah. reach out more. Do you you play Lion? Do you play uh, Smite at all, or are you more of like a FPS? I'm more so the FPS. I mean, uh, COD, Apex, old mess with, you know, like mostly COD. <laughs> if he's not playing an a uh, FPS, it's because I dragged him away from into it. <laughs> I hear I hear Apex gets pretty competitive, dude. It does. Yeah, and that uh, that and uh, I don't know. Is there teams for Fortnite? Is that even a thing? There's players, there is, but yeah, it's mostly players. I dropped Fortnite, dude. I can't do it no more. <laughs> yeah, I was I, tired of get. I was tired of getting smoked by twelve year olds. Exactly, dude. Like, it, and then, uh, like, I was doing it on YouTube. Friggin' tower before you even get one shot off. You're like, okay, what did I just get into? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That people drop hot, and like, you're still coming down. You're just pow, you know. But like, yep. I was building a YouTube. I actually did uh, a solo podcast uh, previous to this one, and I explained to everybody like, I just wasn't having fun no more, dude. Like, off off camera, I have a blast, dude. I go in, I get sweaty, but like in front of the camera playing like i'm just not happy you can see it on me you know what i mean i pissed off i look like i look like a zombie uh, a bunch of 12 year olds are like can you buy me uh, not roblox or whatever it's called but like can you buy me v bucks like yeah. hey, dude go ask your mom for some v bucks bro <laughs> especially I get with all that. the ice changers now you never know yeah. if you're a kid or not dude. exactly dude and i'm just trying to like i couldn't relate to anybody either they'd be like man i got kicked out of class i'm like i'm old enough to be your dad bro <laughs> Like, I'd be I'd be I'd be whooping your ass right now if you were my kid get why, cat kicked out of class. Yeah, why why are you playing Fortnite, dude? You got kicked out of school. <laughs> so you guys got anything coming up? Like what what are you guys doing? I guess I guess fill me I in on Spectre. CS2. Yeah, like we have a CS two team who's playing tonight. It's um, like CSGO? Yeah. Well oh. CS uh, CS two I guess is No the the uh, Okay. Yeah, dude, that game's but, um, crazy. Yeah, they're playing in uh face it tour, uh league right now. We have a uh, Rainbow Six all female team. Um they're gonna be entering the league, I believe, later on this week. We're still trying to put together a new uh, chat. Well, I think we're in the process of putting together a challengers team for Apex again. So do you just got like a putting together a COD team right now? So do you just got like a roster that'll like you got a people a couple people that'll say like like hey I'm a little burned out on Apex if you want to throw up a Call of Duty team I'm I'm good for like a couple months or, or I, you try I, or do you try I, to get them I, locked I, in. I wish. I wish <laughs> it was that easy. I think it's uh, like that, dude. One FPS is like another in a sense, dude. If you can get that aim dialed in. The guns yeah, are different, uh, but it's I, I different would name. I would say yes, but that's it's so far from the truth. It's not even funny. Like, you think you're good at call, you know, you think you're good at Warzone, but I'll then you go Warzone. drop into Apex and get smoked. You know what I mean? Like, there's uh, obviously there's people out there that are just you know naturally talented. Like we have a creator named Beastly who is I I would put up there as one. You know, he's one of the better Apex players. I mean, uh, Warzone players out there. Period. Like. You know, like there's a lot of amazing Warzone players out there, but he's definitely one of them. You he's, know, he's they, the one. I per, I personally think if they made a top, you know, like As Tim Tatman said, he's that guy. Top, <laughs> he's that yeah, guy. He, <laughs> yeah. He killed he uh, he killed Tim the Tatman, or I don't know if he killed Tim the Tatman, but Tim the Tatman uh, spectated him. Really? Yeah, yeah. but what, I, what I, I, I honestly, <laughs> I honestly, I would put him up there if they made a top twenty five in the world. I feel like our boy Beastly would easily be up there. Now, I I mean, he, consist he consistently drops 16, 20, 30 kills in Warzone. Hell yeah, dude. I hear it gets a little rough, though. Like, like it's, it's I, I can't even imagine in the, the high competitive leagues, because, like, you start dealing with those people that are using, like, different computers to hack and stuff, and, like, aimbots. And, like, you guys probably encounter that all the time, right? All the time. We've, uh, we've actually had one of our Apex teams constantly gets griefed. We have a we have a we have an Apex team with with a couple people who are top the top top tier players like they're among some of the best like tier two tier one players out there and people know it so people 
purposely grief them when they're playing in like tournaments like if they'll, they'll see like oh that's them you know and then you know they'll purposely try to grief them and give them a low placement or try and kill them off like earlier and our apex team has lost out to hackers um so do you call you guys call them out obviously or yeah i mean like yeah got, i mean we yeah. don't have to everybody does yeah like, you call them out on twitter and stuff. Call them out. You, well, you guys I mean, are we don't, we don't we don't have to call them out on twitter but like they will they get, get called there's, out there's, there's there's people on twitter that are like their sole purpose in life they get little giggles out of it just to go expose people for cheating when when it comes time for like you guys like scrimmage and stuff like will you guys coach them saying like like hey man you were uh i seen you were kind of over here it wasn't really working out for you you should try to take this route and see how that works or do you guys just kind of let them figure that out themselves well, we try to find like coaches and stuff like that, and uh, yeah. like, we have we have like a director of esports. We have two of them actually now, um, just because they have different specialties. Like uh, we have Moto Fury who does uh, like Apex and Halo, and you know like, CS:GO. He, he's consistently like a, a like recruiting different FPS games, and we just picked up Bob the Destroyer. He he's pretty big in the R six. Yeah, he's pretty big in the R six scene. Yeah, and he he came over to us from. Uh, another org that he used to be an owner and uh you know pretty much the two of them do a lot of the recruiting you know they know coaches within the scene i i know coaches within apex at least you know pretty much for the most part those guys do what all the recruiting and basically uh make sure that like the players are taken care of as far as you know making sure they have the proper coaching uh, making sure that they you know have everything they need and pretty much we you know just check in on them make sure that they're okay and if they need anything we're here you know we'll put our two cents in here or there but I guess I, and neither one of us, you know, ever went professional in like. Yeah, as, as much as I like to take credit for it, neither of us are good enough at any of the games to be coaching people. We just we just know what the what to do and who to put together and like. You okay. Know, we yeah, we recognize yeah. talent. Okay, awesome, dude. So like, how how often how often do you guys get like, uh, oh, dude, I was I was owner of this org, bro. You should you should let me slide in at this rank or something. Like you guys do like positions um, or ranks we do we do have positions we have the owners then we have the board which are kind of people who obviously the owners are people who um are responsible for the whole org on the bait on the face base of things and then also financially you know take responsibility then we have the board who are kind of people that we've had around for years that we trust their judgment or their opinions when it comes to things and every now and then you know they'll throw you know they'll help the org financially but it's not required of them so they kind of get a spot you know to help us there then we have our uh, directors which we have you know our directors of esports director of media you know content stuff like media. that yeah content social media then we have our community managers which uh which are kind of just the people in the discord day in day out answering people's questions if they have any uh, directing people where to go if they want you know to um become part of this or any questions that would quote unquote not you know don't bother an owner with i'm right here type thing sure but i mean we we also have a super open door policy like you can approach me in line at any point like you can message us at 4 a.m. in the morning. We'll probably get back to you within the hour. <laughs> that's sick, dude. That's so, really, yeah, you that's can message us at any any time of the day, and either me or him will probably get back to you. And if he's bit, if someone messages him, and he's at work, you'll be like, "Hey, yo, this person messaged me, asked me this. Can you, you know, let you know respond to them?" And I'll message them, or vice versa. If I'm at work in lines at home, I'll be like, "Hey, you know, this person hit me up. Can you go, you know, reply to them for me?" And he'll let them. And then after community managers it's, it's there's not really any structure we have we have our like levels in the discord that have different names uh that are based off of different types of ghosts like yokais and onis and all that kind of stuff but that's just that's cool how active <laughs> that's just all how active you've been in the discord each one is a rank so you you rank up at, in the discord by interacting liking talking stuff like that so you get so you level up on that and then you know other than that we have our like Content our cre and our content play. creators oh, oh, yeah. and then we have our esports players yeah, that's and awesome, then we dude. just have the community in general so so like have do you guys ever get somebody like that'll be like dude i was uh i was co-owner over and blah blah can i can i help you guys or something like that or do you say like like yeah we'd love to have you but we want you to start you know just like everybody not, else does, not or... often it actually doesn't happen as often as you think it does um, it does though. We go through a big vetting process. Like, yeah. You know, why'd you leave the org? What'd you? What'd you what happened? You know. So you have, like, why you right? coming out? Funny, funny enough. It, funny enough as it is, Bob was that was that guy. Yeah. But but 
I recommend I also recommended Bob because I know Bob and we have a good friend of ours that also knows Bob so Bob came highly recommended from a lot of people he only uh left his org because unfortunately he got screwed over so he was out of the org game and kind of just doing side jobs for the orgs helping them build teams because he's he's really good at finding rainbow six teams hey dude their loss your guys is game Exactly. I do have a, a really cool question with you. you guys. Uh, you guys mess with like virtual racing at all? I did I when to. we were with uh, when we were at Premiere. I had uh, one guy that was actually doing F1, and he messaged me right before I ended up uh, leaving. I haven't really kind of touched it since. We want to. It's huge. Um, it's huge. I, I want to so bad, especially, especially since I I used to be an F1 fan back in the day, and then my buddy Panda just got me back into F1 again. <laughs> like me and him just got back a week ago from Florida because we went to the Miami GP. Okay. Um, and we, I mean, we had a blast. Like I was, you know, five feet away from a car going, you know, two hundred and ninety miles an hour. <laughs> That's it. Zoom, probably like yeah, exactly. And, and I've and, all, and I've always enjoyed watching the i racing things, and I think Lions kind of enjoyed watching it too because it is interesting. And it, I mean, it's not easy. No. no so I, I have, a, I actually have a rig next to me. Nothing crazy. It's a TMX Pro. Uh, I got the shifter and all that. It's, it's not cheap. And uh, I did i i racing probably for like two or three months, and I really enjoyed like the um, the trucks. I do the jumps and stuff. I like doing that. Like, oh yeah. Um, but yeah, those guys those guys get serious, and I would notice like they would have sports teams on their cars. You know what I mean? And that'd probably be, like if you enjoy racing, that'd be something cool. You guys. Oh no, we I, we we would love to get into i racing. It's just it's just here and far between. Like you know, like trying to find i racing people. Yeah. Um. Like I'm, I, the buddy I went to Miami with just bought a, what what was it like twenty two hundred dollar rig? True. Yeah, I think it was like twenty two hundred dollars. Yeah. He he loves his i race. Yeah. Like he's a Formula One guy. Like he plays F F. Uh, was it F F one? Yeah, my neighbor. Yeah, twenty four. Had a racing rig in my garage because he he couldn't keep it in his basement. <sighs> he didn't have enough space. Yeah. And uh, he was always worried about water getting in because like water would come up in the in the basement where I live. Oh man. And uh, so he would always bring he, like we have like a loft over the top of the garage area. He would bring it or he brought it over there and that used to be like the little brother's like game room so to speak. He left it over there and we, he used to do that like with a set of Corsa. And he used to make like all these crazy custom cars and stuff like that for a set of Corsa and then upload it. And, uh, do drift, like drift tournaments and stuff. Oh, dude, did he have like the handbrake and stuff? Yeah, he had the handbrake. That's he so had the, sick. The whole thing. And he built like a. He actually took a seat out of like his uh, crash BMW. Oh, that's so he, sick. They totaled it. He took the seat out of the crash BMW and built like a wooden frame around it, and then uh, attached everything to it. Yeah, dude, I uh, I watch a guy over on Twitch, man. If you guys ever want, you know, think about it, or you enter that realm of it, I'll I'll definitely throw it by him, you know. Absolutely. Well, we are, we have, like I said, we have an open door policy. If it makes sense, we'll, we'll look into it. And I mean, we're always, I mean, people always ask me, like, you know, like ask us, like, do you have to be part of Spectre to do this? Do you have to be part of Spectre to do this? It's like, no, dude, if you have a friend or something that you think is good enough to do this or good enough to do that, like, by all means, send them our way. We'll talk to them. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I mean, like, if you have a friend that you know, because we've had it several times where unfortunately people, you know are too big for their britches <laughs> you know and they think they're you know they think that we've had it so many times where you know nice so we meet again. someone who you know unfortunately is you know the realist realistic view is they're mediocre at the game they're playing yeah because we have we have people across all games so like our 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 you know our warzone players they're all crimson iridescent you know our valorant team when we have them we're all immortals you know our csgo teams are all global elites like you know, our Apex players are all Predators or, or Masters. Our Call of Duty players are always Crimson or Iridescent. All top you know what tier. I mean? That's and awesome. It, yeah. You know, they're, they're, all, they're all at that top tier. So it's like, if you come to me and say, hey, you know, I want to play, you know, I want to play, you know, call, you know, like Apex for you guys, you know, we'll talk, you know, Lion will talk to him, like, what's your high, you know, what, you know, obviously sometimes, you know, rank doesn't translate to, to that, just depending right. on like, but for the most part, it's, it's a pretty accurate, you know it's a pretty accurate base to go off of like if you can't make it to pred lobbies like you know or if you can't make it to you know masters lobbies like there's no you know point because that's all you're gonna be playing is masters and preds yeah you're just gonna be getting mad <laughs> yeah so it's like we've had guys come up to us and you know they're like silver or gold players and they they want money and it's like i don't even you know like you know it's like it's like who are you bro? i don't I even got my, I don't I got even... my team i've been playing for you know since yeah. season five but i'm gold and silver and i want forty five hundred dollars a month i'm like yeah like huh 
It's like, uh, no, no, that's not gonna happen, bro. Yeah, I could, I could see the frustration. I don't know who told you what, but uh, that. <laughs> yeah, like, who, who told you you get money, bro? <laughs> Bring them to my attention. Yo, let let me get into these uh these fun questions. I kind of, I was kind of thinking of one as we were doing this. Of course, of course. So one, I always ask everybody. I I, I love pizza. I'm a pizza guy. Um, do you do you like the New York like the long thin New York style or do you like the uh, Chicago or Detroit like lasagna type pizza? Oh, you're asking you, you can't. You, I said he's a New Yorker. You're from New York, I'm, bro. I'm, no, I'm from New Jersey, so. Oh, uh, dude. Yeah, it's, I'm the New York pizza all yeah, the he's, way. He's but. a Jersey, <laughs> New York Jersey boy. I mean, I don't. Dude, I grew up on stuff crust, man. Like dude, stuff New Yorkers would hate me. Stuff New Yorkers crust. would hate me, man. Like. <laughs> No, I do. I do appreciate the, a good like New York slice because we had a we had a place that I frequented a lot growing up called Slice in New York, where the owner was like, I mean, dude, the dude, the dude had been here for twenty like in California for twenty years and still had his New York accent. Oh my god, that's awesome! Yeah, yeah you got he import water from New York. Uh, yeah, all his every like, featured on a food thing. Yeah, he, no, this no, this guy, but this guy got all his stuff from New York, like all his like his, the company, like like there was New Yorkers who built the place. Like the dude is like it's like a piece, it's a piece of home to him. That's so he, everything was New York. That's sick. But I grew up going to there. But I mean, de- uh, it's, it's 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 weird though because a good deep dish is a good deep dish, and a good yeah. New York slice is a good New York slice. So have you ever and had like there's... Chicago style though? Like, dude, I I went to Chicago. I went to like a bomb place there, and I tried a piece, and I'm like, is that the one with the sauce on top? Yeah, dude, I I couldn't back it, bro. I couldn't back it. Like it was, it was weird. Like I couldn't hold it. I had to like use the silverware to eat it. Like I'm trying, I'm trying to, I'm trying to like fold that bad boy. (laughs) So, so what what, would you think? You're you're for both, huh? I, uh, if I had to pick, I'll, I'll, I'll I'll go with my boy Lion. Hell yeah. I'm in New York slice. All right. We're going to, we're going to ask Lion who, who, or no, you, sorry. Camera slipped. Lion, who, who's your, who's your favorite, like iconic streamer out there? Like big dog. Don't say your brother. (laughs) <laughs> is, I, I is mean, your brother doctor just if i had to put <laughs> no i honestly don't have like a favorite i mean i, I kind of watch everybody and i mean it, it, like that's the crazy part is like i don't really have like a if i if they're streaming like i turn them on and just like watch them all the time because i flip through so many channels just to you know see what everybody's up to you know and i like to kind of just kind of watch all these different channels and see like all the different personalities and like what they're doing um you just said me <laughs> <laughs> it, it's tough like it really is tough because like, i mean there's so many good streamers out there and like stuff like that i mean if i had to if i had to pick one that i used to actually watch a lot it was a girl that used to stream uh for lazarus it was taryn she used to play PUBG. i used to watch her all the time uh her and her boyfriend both played competitively they were just always enjoyable to watch like just her energy and you know his energy when they were playing together used to just like suck me in and it got me sucked into PUBG and uh that was actually what made me get a pc um okay nice i would i would say if that if i had to pick one that would be the one that i used to watch all the time and what about you man mr Narco? Uh, for you, me hold on for me real, real quick real quick real quick sorry where did that name come from like that is such a that is such a name bro narcolepsy yeah narcolepsy like I what have narcolepsy <laughs> oh do you really yeah i yeah. have narcolepsy I, so i've had i've had three major names over the course of my uh four major names i've, I've i always change my name like on in discord and on games i change my name left and right i've, I've always been i had supersonics because that was it used to be my favorite basketball team growing up as a kid before they disappeared then lucifer i had forever like if you say if you hang around just still, still people still call me lou or lucy um zavacron which is my last name and then narcolepsy and i figured i was i was ready for a rebrand but i was like i need something that's just gonna stick and that sounds badass you know because it's hard to like for me it was hard to beat zavacron because zavacron was just a good one yeah and i was like you know what i have narcolepsy everybody gives me shit about it all the time <laughs> people are hopping to discord and i'm in there by myself like, how's my little sleepy boy <laughs> shut up dude. Like, dude so i was like i went with narcolepsy and everybody loves it Dude, I got playing with him in Warzone, and all of a sudden you just hear, "Dude, that was my buddy." I, I used, I used to, one of my best homies, dude, uh, goes by the name Soldier, and we'd be gaming, dude, and I know where he just crash out, and like everybody in the chat would be like talking shit, and I'm like, "Dude, he's just sleeping, bro. If you don't like it, ten minutes later he'd be like, huh? I'm like, welcome back, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, you have a good nap, dude. That's how it is with me. 
That's cool, man. Well, but hey, I, but see, the thing, the thing is, is my, my friends are dicks about it, too, because I can't even go to the bathroom for two minutes because I'll come back and be like, how'd you nap? How'd you nap? Oh, how'd my God. <laughs> it's fucked up. Yeah, they, the ones that actually know you when you're actually knocked out, they like, know the difference. Just to recap, oh. what what is what is your favorite? Uh, what is yeah, your... back to your question. Uh, it'd have to be Burke Black or Co-Carnage. I don't know who either. What what do they do? What's what's their uh, name? Bur they're both variety streamers. Uh, Burke Black is a pirate themed streamer. Uh, he's been one of the part. He's been a partner on Twitch for years. You know, he's one of he's one of Twitch's golden boys. Okay. Uh, Co Carnage is also one of Twitch's golden boys. But I had my kind of my cool uh, moment <laughs> uh, at TwitchCon because I it, I think it was twenty eighteen. I was walking down, you know, down one of the the, um, the walkways to get somewhere else to TwitchCon, and I saw Berg Black off to my off to my right, and I had a tank top on that day, and I walked past him, and he's like, "Dude, I love your tattoo," because <laughs> uh, I have a I have a stormtrooper with uh, like uh, Davy Jones tentacles on oh, my shoulder, <laughs> and so I got a picture. He's like, "Dude, can I take a picture of it?" And I was like, I "Like starstruck." Yeah, I, like, I can take a picture of my tattoo. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. So, I, so I, I obviously I obliged, and then I was like, "Can I get a picture with you, dude? Like you're one of my favorite streamers." He's like, "Oh, dude, that's awesome." So I got a picture, but yeah, Burke Black. I've always enjoyed watching him. Good vibes, good people, and he's kind of like me. I have a problem. I play fucking everything. <laughs> dude, it's it's the worst addiction ever as a as a this streamer. This man makes me download more games than anybody I know. That was the worst thing I ever said. Is I want to be a variety streamer. Like I, that, it's like I just opened up too many doors. <laughs> like whenever the I'm newest very, game comes out, you gotta buy it. You gotta buy it. Like dude, I'm I have. Very I have so many I'm games. very careful about how I ask people to play things now. Because people <laughs> they used to get mad at me. Like him and our other buddy Cardi used to get mad at me because I would tell them to download things. But now I word myself, Hey, do you want to try this game with me? There you go. <laughs> because if I say try, that means we're trying it. If I don't like it, I'm not gonna play it. If you like it, have fun. What power to you? <laughs> you know, like now you can't blame me because I asked you to try it. You could have said no. I don't want to try a new game. You're like I don't but want. You did. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm I'm a sucker for that too, man. I'll buy so many freaking games, and then uh, just because the homeboys like I won't even tell them I'm gonna play it. I'll see somebody playing it. I'm like, oh, dude, I gotta get that, and I'll never touch it. But I, I don't yeah. want to. I don't want to refund it because it's like I got it. I already own it. Why would I refund it? You know, my money's gone. Oh well. Yeah. Um, I'm probably gonna ask you guys the cringiest question ever since you guys are like big into esports. But Absolutely. I got I gotta know optic or phase. He's leaving. <laughs> He's leaving. Oh, optic? No, he was backing up. So oh, say the flag. <laughs> dude, I'm that, saying. So that that's an optic flag. That's an optic beanbag. I love. I, I like. I like op optic too. <laughs> I have an optic hat in their new jersey that just dropped on the way today. Nice. I have four jerseys in my thing. I went to dude. I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a fanboy. I'm an optic fanboy. Who's, who's your favorite? Uh, I would right, currently. Favorite. Let's do let's do of all time because I, I probably wouldn't know any of the current ones. Probably probably had to be in, in like the the Call of Duty era, huh? or no? No, I I mean I lo I loved AGP when he was playing for uh, Halo, but I mean dude, I kind of I miss that game, dude. Halo, Whew. good memories. Kind of got to give it to Nate Shot. Nate Shot, dude, that's an OG. Yeah, I just I've I've always loved Nate Shot. Always been a fan. Like I was super excited for him when he created his own org. Oh, nice, so, dude. That's that's even. Sick. He was kind of one of the inspirations for starting Spectre as well. It's crazy how that works, man. How much influence somebody could be on you. You know what I mean? Yeah. What uh? What about you, Lion? Who who are you repping? Or do you not? Or you not fall into that stuff? He's gonna say face because uh, his brother played. No, mm -hmm. I, I honestly don't like face to be honest. Um, I never was a fan. So I mean, I, if I had to pick one of the two teams, I would say Optic. But or do you got other teams? To, if I had to pick one outside of it, it would be TSM. TSM, okay. And only just because I, you know, like I've seen how they treat their people. I, you know, I've been around it, you know, because, like I said, my, my brother played there and I was able to, like, kind of experience things with him, you know, when he, for the first, like, year of his career. So uh, just being around them and how they treat people, it was, you know, gave me, like, a better perspective as how to, how Team One Orgs treat people. I like that. I like how it runs in, in the family, too, man. The, the, is your, the brother older or younger? Younger. He's the baby. He's the, the, the baby. baby. <laughs> the baby of the family said, look out big, bro. I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, let's get to the big question. I don't want to keep you guys wrapped up all night. I feel like we could talk forever, though, man. You guys are pretty cool. Um, I appreciate that.
what what are the pros and cons of the the esports organization? Uh, what? Oh boy, the good and bad, dude. <laughs> Might be here for another four hours. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. Um, oh. God. Uh, do you want you want me to go first? Or do you want to go first? Yeah, go ahead. No, you can go. Ahead. I I guess the pros of it are kind of given just being involved in the scene in general you know you meet a lot of cool people like i've met people i never thought i would meet you know i've got like being part of an org and getting in to go in where players go because you have to have a pass to go in where players go i've got you know i've got to meet scump and you know all these other players and going to events i've gotten to meet you know warzone players and professional players like there's a there's a thing right there it's my play it's my playstation 5 you know the whole thing is is the whole side panel. I took it off and took it with me to Charlotte and got a bunch of pro players to sign it. That's sick, dude. Um, but yeah, the pros are you know you get you kind of get to meet people you've looked up to in the esports scene. One of the biggest pros for me is that if you manage to create a se successful org and you stay true to it being a family, the the pride people take in being a part of it is without a doubt one of the most rewarding things. I could have a Call of Duty team go win challengers champs and be the best Call of Duty team on the market. And that's going to be an amazing feeling. But if they are prideful in where they're, where, who they rep, you know, like they take pride in Spectre, they take pride in that jerseys that they wear. They take pride in, you know, they, they're repping Spectre, you know, they're telling people about Spectre. They're telling people how happy they are. They're bringing people. That's a better feeling than getting that big dub. For sure. It, it's a, it's a very warm feeling knowing that I've created a place that people can call home, that they feel comfortable and safe, that I've created something that people want to be a part of. Yeah, I love that, man. Um, that's the that's the biggest one for me, at least, when it comes to pros. I'll let Lion tell you what his pros are. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for me, the I mean, the pros is just seeing even just the little successes, you know, like seeing a content creator, you know, create a community event and, you know, it going off without a hitch, you know, or, you know, seeing a, a player who came to me, you know, didn't really have too much experience. And, you know, we told them, you know, hey, play with so-and-so, learn, you know, a little bit more about the game, you know, and then grow to, you know, becoming, you know, one of those, like, top players, like, you know, and it was like I was saying, like, where I had that one team that, you know, I picked out of 50 players and pretty much every single one of those guys went pro. Uh, one of them plays on SSG right now. One of them, you know, is a uh, aspiring pro player that is in Pro League actually for Apex. And then the other one uh, retired not too long ago. Uh, the kid Scissors, you know, all of them got to play on like professional rosters. So like, it was just to me like, you know, it's just rewarding seeing like those little play like little things and you know like basically getting like players that want to do challengers for apex or you know want to do challengers for base it for csgo or challengers for you know rainbow six and you know just watching these guys grow from like a t3 player to a t2 player to a you know getting signed by a t1 org from our org is like just the most rewarding part to me and then you know seeing our content creators grow from you know basically having like smaller community uh, like where it was really close and close niche to you know our family then start showing up to the streams and we basically helped grow their stream out and then they ended up getting even more people showing up to their stream you know consistently and it, it just becomes like this giant cluster of like just all out like love on it you know and it, yeah. it's rewarding to me to see all that and you know to know that like we initiated that we caused you know that type of environment for that to happen is you know worth every penny to me hell yeah dude you sold me on it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's awesome dude you guys are so awesome i love it what, what about the cons dude or, or is there not many is it, is it uh all? no there's uh that's the laundry list <laughs> oh no <laughs> um no it's not i i joke but the, the the cons from me egos is one there's a lot of egos in the esports world um i mean line of watched egos ruin friendships unfortunately it just it happens you know when you know you win something and then now you know whether you want to or not some people let it slip in and out you know that that attitude of i'm better now you know we've had people who won something under us and then immediately when they won it they dipped for a better opportunity you know didn't give us you know the chance to grow with us you know we've had people lose under us and say we were the reason they lost it sucks uh because you're the especially especially as the owners you're the scapegoat it's always your fault if yeah. something goes wrong no matter what it is 
it, it could be a, it could be a you know a tiff between two people and you know something horrible gets said and the friendship's ruined and someone leaves somehow it's mine or lion's fault that it happened and it's like how like we weren't even there that that, that isn't even between us you know right another another con is the lion's gonna look lion, i know lion's gonna laugh at this one but the financial side of it sucks uh yeah, yeah. What, what do you uh, mean by that it, like if you, it like costs financial. it if you want so you can start an org and you can do your thing but unfortunately and you know people may disagree with this if you want to be taken seriously as an org and compete and have content you know bigger content like massive content creators you're gonna have to spend money it's expensive yeah you're gonna if you want to if you want to have the best call of duty team you're gonna have to pay for their lodging and their jersey and their travel if you want a good content creator to 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 put your logo on their streams and on their stuff you're gonna have to pay them monthly you know a good amount you know what i mean like sure. you know we have team unfortunately we've you know we've put a lot we've put a lot of money into specter um I'd be I'd be lying if I wasn't honest and said that you know Lion's done a lot of it, just 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 because you know certain things certain things in life have happened on my side of things and he's also I I don't not many people know this but he's also my best friend I've spent you know holidays with him and his mother considers me one of her children you know like that's awesome yeah I got I had she demanded that I was back there for Easter like that's yeah, how that's yeah. how serious it was. <laughs> So so yeah, dude, but, it, run, you know, it runs deeper than the org. Like, yeah, no, this this I and I and I've and I've always told Lion that if something happens, I will give up this org before I ever gave up, you know, his friendship because you know he's like he's a brother, he's my brother, and I will one hundred percent throw this org in the trash before I would ever throw the friendship, you know, yeah. throw away my friendship with him. And he stepped up in a big way, you know, financial financially, and you know he's you know he does a lot of the things. And all he asks of me, you know, really, in, in a sense, in return, is just run the run the fucking org, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Don't be an absentee man. Don't be an absentee owner. Like, and I and I and I'm pretty confident in the fact that you know you can ask anybody in the org that I'm pretty hands on with everybody. I check up on people. I, you know, I do graphics for people. I find things for people. You know, it's I awesome, help people man. get situated. Like I do, I do whatever I can to make people comfortable or happy within the org. But yeah, back to financial is one of the biggest cons, burdens of, <laughs> of owning an org is that it, it costs money if you want to be taken seriously. And then, um, and then do some of the, like the, like the the members as well. So like if you say, hey, we got this big competition coming up, we can provide X amount. But if you guys want to do this, you guys need to provide this. Or um, so we have teams that approach us on that. Like we have teams that approach us for like these big Call of Duty events and they'll approach us and be like hey you know they'll be like are you look it all it goes this way this is how it goes they message us say hey are you looking for an org to represent you here we'll say we're always looking for an org depends on what you guys are asking from the org and then then it goes from there like what they ask like we've had teams who ask for just you know exorbitant amounts of money in their best place is like a top 60. yeah Yeah. now we had now now i won't say top 60 is bad because we do have smash players we have, we forgot to mention earlier we have a smash two smash players and a tekken player yeah nice and a top 60 out of four thousand people is great that's really good but a top 60 out of 70 is not no <laughs> you know what i mean so when you got 70 teams and that team's best play instrument is top 60 we're less inclined to be like if they ask for like oh we want you to pay for our travel and lodging it's like hey yeah, yeah, like, you know? it, like you gonna show some numbers or? Yeah, yeah exactly. But if, you, yeah. but if we, but if on the other flip side of that, if we got a Smash player place top sixty out of the you know four thousand best players in the world, okay, maybe we'll help you pay for flights. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it's it, it all it all depends on their placements and what they're asking for. And we've actually had teams who literally just asked to provide jerseys. Man, them skills talks and them bullshit walks, basically. Huh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> and you know, we and those teams. And funny enough as it is, the teams that we've literally just bought jerseys for and sent them on their way because that's all they asked from us have probably some of our best placements. Nice. So I mean, it's all it's all it's all you know relative when it comes to like, you know what you've done in the scene versus, versus what you're asking. Yeah, like what have what have you provided for everybody? Whether it yeah. be content, whether it be your gaming skill, whether it be financial. I get that. 
And I mean, in the last con for me would probably be having to be an owner over. And, and when I say that, I mean, being an owner before being a friend, you know what I mean? Yeah. You can't always like be we've the, had, the we've had, yeah, we've had friends who have made complete idiots of themselves. And yeah, they're my friend and I understand what they did and you know why they did it or who they are or how they are when it involves our org. It's like, dude, I'm, I love you to death, but I'm not your friend right now. I'm the owner of this org who you just made look really bad because you were an idiot. Yeah. You know, and, and sometimes it sucks because I mean, Line and I both know we've lost people inspector, you know, have decided to cut ways because, you know, because it's, you know, they did something like we, uh, we had a couple months ago, we had someone who said something they shouldn't have said in the general chat of our discord. And, you know, it got deleted and I, you know, and I messaged them, you know, and some would say, leave it at that. But as an organ owner, you can't just leave it at that, you know? So it's kind of one of those things where like, I just, I approached them and I said, Hey, just don't talk like that. Yeah. What were you thinking, bro? You know, you said some stuff that you shouldn't have said. They messaged, they messaged me back and told me that I was a bad friend for approaching them like that. And I was like, dude, I'm, you know, I like, unfortunately I have to be an organ You said some foul crap. And I have to, I have to address it. You know, deleting it isn't enough. And unfortunately, they left, and that was that. And they don't even, t they don't even talk to us anymore. They have, they actually have me. I don't know about lying, but they have me blocked on everything okay. because I decided to be a uh, decided to be an owner before it was a friend. But I mean, I have to. You know, like this org is where it's at because we've done things the right way. You know, we don't afford people privileges just because you've been around. Yeah, I feel like if you let one, one guy, of friends. if you let one guy do it, you know what I mean, then you gotta let them all do it, yeah. and then it just kind of, I could, I could see it that spirals. Problem. Yeah. What about you, Lion? You got any more cons, or do you have yeah, any? Yeah, I mean, my biggest con is you know basically we bring in play like, and I, I like I said, I handle more side the esports side of things. You know, Zav handles a lot of the content, and, you know, helps me with the with the esports side as well. I mean, my biggest con is basically bringing on players that end up, you know, not fulfilling, you know, like what they agreed on. You know, for the most part, a lot of our players, you know, basically will do exactly what they were signed up to do kind of thing. You know, I don't think we've ever had a Call of Duty team that, you know, didn't do what they were supposed to do. But, like, for instance, like we brought on one Warzone girl that, you know, essentially wanted to be a content creator for us, signed her on to be competitive uh, Warzone, and, you know, literally got caught cheating, like, the next day. Um, it was like, you literally waited until after we bring you on to, you know, to do something stupid. Uh, we had to drop her, like, immediately, and... Yeah, there's no coming back from that. Just, nah, there's no coming back from that. So, I mean, it, it's... That's like the worst thing for me is like just that level of disappointment of like investing into somebody and then, you know, that kind of thing happens or getting them a jersey and then like literally the second they get a jersey, they leave kind of thing. You yeah, know, it's like, like a disappointed uncle. Yeah, I yeah, mean, like, why, it's, why it's you like, like you, that, you, we're giving you a trophy and then you go and you, you, you essentially spit on the trophy kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Zav said, I mean, the financial burden is always like, you know, another top one. Like he said, I mean, it, we we try to equally split you know as much as we can of the financial burden but we don't you know necessarily have like stipend sponsors so like and you know we're always looking for those but you know essentially it's really hard to come by you know especially as a t2 organization to you know essentially break in to getting like stipend like sponsorships you know and we have thousands of dollars in proof of sales you know as far as like our ability to like create and generate sales for companies you know but and especially if it's like something like where they're they're like trying to generate us to you know generate a sale for them kind of thing we were able to like really get that up and going but it's one of those things like where that all that stuff helps you know in the you know financial side of it like being able to send a team out to a tournament or being able to pay for you know an entry fee or being able to you know pay for a flight like Zab was saying or being able to buy an Airbnb for the team to stay at or being able to just throw them a hundred bucks say you know hey guys go get dinner on me you guys played great tonight you know what I mean like you know all that stuff falls back onto us as owners and essentially you know we end up putting it out there to and it's all out of our pockets and like Zav works a normal nine to five I work a normal nine to five Tieable, Untieable works a normal nine to five you know and each of us do our part in you know essentially trying to you know financially help you know get the teams where they need to be or like the uh players what they need we definitely do everything we can to you know essentially try to help the teams get what they need and it's really tough without um 
you know, like that type of stipended, you know, sponsor to that's like, you know, and that like Zav always says it too. Like if you know, like a one on sponsor just dropped like 10k, like for, he, there's so much that he could do with it. Yeah, you know, and so many like teams that he knows and I know that like we would be able to put together and just be able to. And like, we and just we had investors league. back out on us too, like promise us a yeah. bunch of stuff and then back out. Like we had one investor who said he was gonna give what was it like 10k. Yeah. But he wanted to change the name of the org and he wanted to be a partner. Like, he wanted, I mean, we were fine with him making him an owner, but he wanted like majority ownership. And I was like, that's not happening, buddy. Yeah, you're not going to be able to pull the we plug when you want to pull the plug. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We put four years into this. Like, we're not. Yeah, no, stay that. true, guys. No, stay true. And this I mean, is it's, your guys' it's org. Like, it's like you said, like, I've said it so many times and I have, you know, I have people that I can back up. Like, I have, you know, four creators that I could go get right now that would be happy with, you know, 250 a month, you know. I have a team that I could, you know, a top tier team that I could with $2000 send them to, you know, one of the Call of Duty majors. Line has between Line and Motive, they have a laundry list of people that they could go send to play Apex for us. You know, Bob has a laundry list of, you know, R6 teams that, you know, will come play for us. I have a uh, buddy of mine who's you know a top rated fifa player that could come that would come play for us but he, most of his the unfortunate part about him is most of his, the competitions like are overseas and that just that's just messy yeah you gotta get passports and all that at that point well it's not even passports it's gate uh, uh some countries have gaming commissions and taxes and all this stuff that we have oh. to deal with um, yeah. i mean like i said you drop 10k on this oregon i i give give me two Give me 10k in two years, and I can give you that, get you that money back. You know what I mean? Like you heard it here. Have the capability. Investors <laughs> out there, investors out there, help my boys out, man. They they got goals. You help them with money, they'll make you money. <laughs> I mean, and we've had we've had members of the org, you know, help us out. Like they've that we've we've literally just been sitting here gaming, and I mean, Lions probably Lions got a couple, and I've gotten a couple where people just ask us for you know the the information of where to where to put money and it's like you know we, obviously we ask them well, like you know why do you need it and they're like oh i just want to you know i want to help out so it all comes back right so like if you know somebody i mean most, 200 would it go it, it would go to the org it everything would go no, make, nothing goes into mine or his pocket yeah everything we make everything we spent like everything goes towards the org like nothing goes into our pocket like nothing goes to anybody other than like people playing for us and competing for and us. i mean if we, if you know obviously if we're 100 percent honest if me or line ever take out you know like hey i need 20 for gas it's back in there within a day or two right you know I mean, what i mean usually it's, one of us puts it right back double yeah nothing, like man that's the way i always do it if i pull it's I like double. oh I, you know it's because we had we had you know it's like oh i forgot my you know i want my you know my my wife has my debit card, but I have the Spectre card. Can I use it real quick? Oh, you, know you got I mean? it. Like, you got your own bank for your card, dude. Or you got your own card for for your esports? It's. I yeah. mean, it's it's all PayPal. Okay. So. Still, that's that's sick, dude. I mean, that's that's. Yeah, but I mean, it's yeah. like like I said. I mean, you know, we're in we're 100 percent transparent. Like, we we I've had people ask, have you ever taken out of the of the you know of the org's money? And I said, and I've I've answered, yeah, yeah, I took 20 out four days ago but i put it back i put it back two days ago you know what i mean like how many needs like and, <laughs> yeah you know like and if i didn't yeah most of the time if i take something like if i take 20 or 30 for gas like i'm putting 60 in the net you know when i you know the next time i put it you know what i mean like i double it like you know but it's usually back in within a day or two like but everything everything we do goes towards the org you know like nothing goes into our pockets we would love to get to that point someday where you know there's enough income where it could flow into our pockets but even then i don't think i don't think either of us would stop working anyways or take yeah. because the more money that's it the more money that's there the more opportunities we can have you know what i mean hell yeah so i'd rather uh, you know i'd rather have a thousand in there and send a team to challengers with that thousand and win you know seven thousand than have five hundred dollars in my pocket hell yeah dude yeah i think you guys are, are great guys man i love what you guys are doing I don't know. From the sounds of it, you, you guys are in the right mindset. You guys have a, a really big team that's backing you, dude. So I personally, I'm going to start jumping in the Discord and seeing, like, who's streaming and stuff because I want to see these guys. You know what I mean? I love watching some good competitive gameplay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask my editor if they can uh, – drop your guys's uh socials also if you guys want to say it we're going to drop them above you if you guys want to say 
uh, Lion, where you, if you stream, or Narcolepsy, where you stream, we're gonna throw that on the screen. And then also, if you're okay with it, I would love to put uh, the link of your Discord in the description too. So if anybody's interested in joining your your esports league, it's a it's a direct. Or do you not want that on YouTube? That's oh, that's, I mean, that's perfectly fine. Our our Discord's pretty safe. Uh, you have to verify and stuff to get in, so we're cool. pretty pretty solid. And I mean, I, you know. I, I was thinking about this earlier, but um, as a thank you for having us on, I wanna I wanna get you a um, little package from one of our one of our partners hey. called Sauce Bay. Uh, they're a hot sauce. Yeah, I love hot sauce. So <laughs> so good. You know, we'll get it we'll get it to you and you know maybe put it on you know have a little have a little have a little section of your podcast where you try it out and let us know what you think. Dude, hell yeah, I'd love that. Yeah, no, we'll get uh, all you know get some contact info and we'll get it we'll, i'll get one out to you sure dude that'd be amazing dude i look forward to doing it but yeah as for me all my socials are at it's narcolepsy narcolepsy so we'll put that up there or no up there sorry i'm switched <laughs> <laughs> and mine's uh at xx lion xx 5150 awesome on pretty much everything cool guys and then as for specter everything is at specter esports underscore so and that's on twitter everything right yeah everything is everything is the same we try to keep it uniform <laughs> Hey, that's the only way to do it. As hey, best we can. I appreciate you guys so much. I don't want to keep you tied up too much longer. I'm sure you got uh, people hitting you up saying, where the hell are you guys at? <laughs> so just I'm, my wife. Just, just the wife. You're going over. No. Hey, I appreciate you guys. I'd love to have you guys on like in a couple months, man. We, maybe we can recap. I like the yeah, chemistry and, uh, we got here, you know? Maybe maybe instead of me or instead of Lion, uh, we, have, we have another owner who uh, has been with us for probably three, four months now absolutely probably replace one of us or if you gotta if you got room for a fourth uh fourth let me, let me work on it dude i just gotta move these screens around you know i, I could probably definitely <laughs> drop four in here dude yeah, no of course just uh let us know but yeah we'd love to be back i think pretty sure lion feels the same hell yeah, yeah absolutely hell yeah guys i look forward to seeing your guys' content in the future thank you so much much love i appreciate from, it thank uh, you for having us on much love from the gas gauge community to specter esports man you guys uh you guys have a good night all right all right you too see ya and this concludes the gas gauge podcast thanks for listening let me know what you think